welcome to your new favourite pop culture podcast, The post credit Show. I'm your host, Lush, and today I've got a special guest here, my boy Tony. How are you, brother? Good, brother. Thanks for having me. What's crack a and brah? Uh, I think we've got a lot to get through, and I'm very excited. Very excited to have you here, my WrestleMania. man. WrestleMania. WrestleMania. So today we're doing another episode of The post credit Snack, your new favourite bite-sized episodes of The post credit Show. And today we're going to talk about WrestleMania 40. Oh, I'm so excited. We have so much to get through. And to be honest, man, this was one of the most historic WrestleManias. This was incredible. Like, from start to finish, there were some matches there that was like, mm, okay, not too sure. Yep. Didn't really like that. Like, I thought Jimmy and Jey Uso's match was a bit of a letdown. Bit of a letdown, yeah. But then you kind of think about, we started WrestleMania with Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. The hottest superstar in the world today, yep. Rhea Ripley, defending her title against Becky Lynch. What a way to kick off the show. It was it was a bit of a surprise to me, I will admit, because we just had Ripley main event in Australia. Now, I get it's her home country, but I guess at the end of the day, they have to kick it off with a bang. Yeah, exactly. Um, same you, with night two, Seth Rollins. Yeah. So. And you don't want to you don't want to start something as big as WrestleMania with a match like The Pride versus um The Authors of Pain. Like that yeah. to me that that would have just been eh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm actually really stoked that they didn't just do a standard match with those two teams as well. The fact that they added, added Bubba Ray Dudley into it and turned it into something, I yep. think was the best way to handle that because that was that was literally on target to be the most boring match of the day. Look, there was a I wouldn't say – I'd probably say there was a couple matches that were subpar. Yeah. However, for me, the whole storyline behind this particular WrestleMania was one of the best we've seen in a while. And to me, I credit that to Triple H. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, this is the Paul Levesque era, 100% through and through, or as Logan Paul's been saying lately, the Logan Paul Levesque era. I'm like, yeah. All right, okay, cool story, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, he's done such a good job raising this company back to where it was and back to where it was for me when I became a true hardcore fan was before that whole PG era. And how good was it to see Stephanie come out and open night two the way, yep. the way Paul did and night one. Like, that was Triple just, H. that was just shots fired. Vince McMahon, we don't need you anymore. Go yep. away. This is Triple H's town now. Yep. And it even showed footage of him backstage watching her do that. Her paying tribute to his catchphrase, "Are you ready? Are you ready?" Yeah, it was it was just so very good. well put together. So good, and the smile on his face in that backstage footage yeah. was just like real pride. Yeah, but no, look, that was it was it was such a great weekend. Uh, over but between SmackDown, NXT, the two nights of WrestleMania, and Raw, WWE sold over two hundred and one thousand tickets yep when i was watching it live i could not pick a single seat spare there wasn't a spare seat in the house i was even thinking to myself like behind the stage they had seats up the yeah. top and um it was chockers yeah it was it was, it was just full it crazy. was full it's crazy um Let's talk a little bit about night one. Now, night one, a lot of people are saying that night one is a little bit more forgettable than night two. Obviously, night two, so much happened. But we had six title changes over the course of WrestleMania weekend. Obviously, Rhea retained her title against uh, Becky Lynch. But the tag match on night one between the final boss, the final boss and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, what a match. That's exactly right. I mean, you have Cody Rhodes who... It all depends on that match. As fans, are we thinking, can he do it? Can they win? Does he need to win? He's going for the championship that his dad could never have. Yeah, exactly. He's doing that for him. Yeah, no, look, 100%. I think um, a lot of fans predicted that uh, The Rock and Roman Reigns would win that match. Yep. A lot of fans predicted that if The Rock and Roman Reigns wins that match, then it makes Cody a monster baby face yep. when he does eventually pin... Um, the tribal chief, which is exactly what happened. What I didn't see coming, what I didn't see coming was The Rock pinning Cody. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't see Cody taking the fall. I actually thought it was going to be Roman pinning Seth. Yeah, I think with The Rock, I did not either expect him to pin. However, it it needed a twist as well. Yeah. And it's the little minute things that throw that twist in there. Yeah. Like you were saying, Cody um, 
losing night one, night two, he eventually does go into win of people have obviously seen. It makes him look like an unstoppable figure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Against all odds with everything going on with the most overbooked match in WrestleMania yeah. history. I mean, yeah. let's be real here. That match was absolute chaos and it was beautiful. But at the end of it all, Cody had to come out on top yeah. because of the way night one went down. And I just think it was, I think it was magnificent. Um, but let's talk about night two. Let's yep. talk about night two because night two, there were some big things that happened on night two to start with. Um, obviously we had Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre with CM Punk on commentary. And you just knew that Punk was going to get involved in some way, but yep. how beautifully orchestrated was that whole ending piece there? It was, I mean, look, Punk coming back to WWE, okay, he had the injury, he had to have some kind of involvement. And the way that they went about it, the way Damian Priest cashed in, I think it was one of the most perfectly orchestrated cash-ins I've seen in a long time. Absolutely, completely agree. I do think that the funniest thing that I saw all WrestleMania weekend <laughs> was... <laughs> <laughs> was Drew jumping out of the ring, going over to his wife, yeah. grabbing his phone and tweeting, at work, this is boring, lol. Yeah. He, he was celebrating. <laughs> In the middle of the match. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I, look, I feel bad for him. Um, I'm sure you've seen, even after the match, match, Seth Rollins looked back at him and said, you deserve it. Yep. But was Seth Rollins saying, you deserve it? Or was Seth Rollins saying, you deserve what's about to happen to you? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We do not know. He probably meant that. Yeah. Just to get back at it. Like, yeah. you beat me, but you don't know what's coming yet. You have no idea. It was yeah. great. Like it was it was it was cinema. Like it was absolute it was. perfection. It was orchestrated beautifully. I think the reactions from from Drew McIntyre were just magnificent. I can't wait to see what happens next. Obviously, somewhere down the line we're going to get a Drew McIntyre CM Punk story. Um, whether or not that means that we don't see Drew McIntyre for a couple of weeks until Punk is ready to go, I don't know. But I do hope that eventually we get that story and I hope that Seth Rollins becomes involved somewhere along the lines because I think a Seth, Drew and Punk match was just, that that's money. That's well, let's money. Also, you've also got the backstory. So people forget, okay, Punk sabotaged the match during WrestleMania, but Drew McIntyre was the one to injure CM Punk. Yep. Therefore, him not being able to compete. Now, originally, I think the plan was for CM Punk to go on and win the Royal Rumble. Correct, it was. No, no, no. He was, he was supposed to win Elimination Chamber. Cody was always going to win yeah. Rumble. Punk yep. was going to win Chamber. Punk was going to go through and challenge um, Rollins for the title. Correct. And then every match that you hear the, the crowd chanting, CM Punk, CM Punk, when Drew McIntyre is wrestling, you can hear him on the TV speakers. Yeah. Drew McIntyre saying, I injured him, rubbing it in Punk's face. Well, this was perfect for Punk to yeah. get him back. I think the great thing as well, and I think the storyline that they told with with Drew cashing in on, uh, sorry, with with Damien Priest cashing in on Drew was magnificent because how many times did Drew stop Damien Priest from cashing in on Seth Rollins leading into WrestleMania? Yeah. It made perfect sense that that's who the cash in was going to happen against. Yeah. So I'm stoked. I think I think the right outcome happened there. I think the right winner of the initial match. I think the right outcome with the right person leaving with the belt. Correct. Um, funny, funny little story. There's a bit of a backstage rib going on where Rhea Ripley has been channeling Twitter fans, calling calling Damian Priest the bisexual Undertaker, <laughs> which is so funny. Yeah. He doesn't understand it. He doesn't get the joke, How but everyone else does. How can you not? It's fantastic. He's literally the bondage Undertaker. It's fantastic. I love it. But moving on. Moving on, we have another big tag match on night two. So we obviously have the Judgment Day putting up their tag titles. Yep. Now, in a ladder match, we all knew that they were going to separate the titles. We all knew that somewhere along the lines, our truth and the Miz were going to win a title. We I'm knew that they I'm were so going to take one of the titles did. because of the storyline that our truth had been involved with Judgment Day. That was, that was, we expected that. What we didn't expect was the Aussie icon. Grayson Waller and Austin Theory walking away with tag titles. How good is Australian wrestlers right now? We've got them breeding out of everywhere. We've got Rhea Ripley, who, who is the women's world champion. We've got Grayson Waller, who's a tag champion. We've got um, Bronson Reed, who's the, the winner of the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. This was Australian wrestling at its peak. It is. I mean, you can just see it. For instance, like in America, they're heels, obviously. So the crowd will boo the likes of Ripley, Grayson Waller. But it just shows the love we have for them when 
we hosted Elimination Chamber, mm. the crowd went nuts for it. Yeah, him. absolutely. Now, we're going to move on to probably the biggest moment, the biggest match in WWE history. And I'm talking about the moment where, well, let's, let's have a bit of a listen. Samantha Irvin was everyone She's in that moment. Game. She has changed a game. The oh. amount of emotion in her voice. She couldn't get it out. She couldn't get it. And, and I don't know about you, man, but I was man crying here when I was watching it. I was in tears. I couldn't believe it. it was tears running down my face. And you can, yeah. like, what a moment. What a moment. Like it was, like I said, it was the most overbooked WrestleMania match of all time because you didn't just have the Tribal Chief versus the American Nightmare. You had Jimmy Uso who ran in and then you had Jey Uso who, Uso who came in and threw his brother off the stage set, which was a huge bump given the match that they'd had the night before. Then you had Solo come in. And of course, because Solo completely dominated Cena at last year's WrestleMania, Cena comes out to even the score. Then the final boss very slowly makes his way out to the stage. But what absolutely blew everyone away were the last two run-ins. Seth Rollins coming out to the Shield music, which completely turned the script. It did. It was a good throwback. And like we were talking about before the podcast, it was so well put together. How Seth Rollins would speak about to Cody, I'm the only person to be your shield. His, his exact words were, I am the only person who is uniquely qualified to be your shield. Yep. And, and that was months ago he said that. Correct. And I'm sure a lot of us remember as fans how back in the day when Seth betrayed the shield, he would hit Roman Reigns in the back with a steel chair. Ten years ago. And it's all full circle And in, in, in that moment, now, th that's not to forget that there was one more quote-unquote run-in, which we'll get to in a second, but that's like the storytelling moment where you had Seth Rollins in the ring, you had Cody Rhodes on the other side of the ring, and you had Roman Reigns with a chair in his hand, and he could either destroy Cody to retain the title or he could get his revenge on Seth Rollins. And what does he do? Goes for Seth Rollins. Boom. And that cost him the championship. And that at the cost end him the, the championship. It, it was absolute magic. He had he had Cody beat there. Yeah. And he decided, you know what? I'm gonna pay you back for what you did ten years ago. Yeah, it was. And it magic. cost him the championship. The word that everyone's using at the moment is cinema. It was. It was, it was, it was cinema. Honestly it was beautiful. pure peak storytelling. But then of course, probably the biggest moment in WrestleMania history. Another I'm calling tackle. it the biggest moment in WrestleMania history was when the, the Rock is in the ring and he's holding center court before all of this goes down and everyone's sitting there going, oh, come on, let's we want to hear the, the, the glass crash, the Steve Austin. We didn't get that. What we got instead was... Oh. I honestly did not expect that. And you know what? I'm glad it happened. Yep. And it wasn't so predictable. Yep, same. Because a lot of this was very predictable. We did see a lot of these things coming. We did. We, we kind of had an inkling that, that most of these matches were going to go the way they did. And we'll get to a discussion that's been happening online about that in a moment. But adding The Undertaker as that extra element in there, I think, was just absolute magic. So, look, to be honest with you, I think it was the best WrestleMania of the modern era. Whether or not it's one of the best WrestleManias of all time, ask me that in two years' time. Because right now we have the hindsight of, of recent events. And everyone is still very much on a high. Uh, yeah. It's hard to say that this is the best WrestleMania of all time because it was only a week ago and we're all still high about it. Look, I wouldn't say it was the best WrestleMania of all time. However, I could justify that it was one of the best main event on WrestleMania. I agree. I agree. Mate, final thoughts. We're going to wrap up in a second. Um, who do you want to see Cody coming up against next? Honestly, I've been a big fan of him. And he is returning, but how do you correspond him into it? I don't know what they have planned. I would like Seamus to get another push. Yeah. Um, he's 
been hard done by injuries, stuff like that. But he is returning. Um, at the moment, inside of WWE, the people that are wrestling right now, it's hard to say. There's there's so many options for him. I mean, you yeah. have LA Knight. You have AJ Styles. Kevin Owens, even. Mm-hmm. Although I think he'll probably continue that feud with Logan Paul. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, for me... Um, this, this is a really hard one because WWE have spent the last 12 months really building up their internal roster. Now, I, I was quoted as saying on the post-credit show a couple of months back that WWE has a problem when it comes to creating talent. Mm-hmm. They don't have any megastars. I am now prepared to retract that. They have so many megastars that can step into that role against Cody Rhodes and do really, really well. So to be honest with you right now, I don't think that there is a bad decision when it comes to who who's up next for Cody Rhodes. But the one that I want to touch on is Damian Priest. Who's next yeah. for Damian Priest? Now, I know we've we've just had Raw where um, main event Jey Uso has just won a qualifying match, so he's up next. But who do you want to see a feud with Damian Priest? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, to be honest... You have Damian Priest who just fought Mac, uh, who just cashed in on McIntyre, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, WWE, if they were smart, they would do the whole feud with Punk and McIntyre. Mm-hmm. I don't think they should personally give him another shot straight away. I agree. I think that feud could become a bigger thing. And I think that's the same with Roman and Cody too. I don't want to yeah. see Roman Cody three yet. No, no. I, for me personally, I think that's done. Yeah. I think they can still continue the whole thing with the bloodline. And recently on SmackDown which is another story. They're, f- they're feuding, but oh, we'll get into God. that another that's, time. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah. But it look, like you said, there's so many internal talent within that roster. Who You can pick whoever. Can I tell you who I want to see go up against? I want to see, and this is, this is going to be left of center. You're going to be like, whoa, didn't see that coming. I want to see Damien Priest feud with Braun Breaker. Well, he just signed to SmackDown. I don't care. We're about to have a draft. I do rate Bron Breaker. And you know the thing that broke him open? That Royal Rumble performance from him amazing, was amazing. amazing. The Where amount he... of strength, yeah. speed that he can produce, he, he looked phenomenal. It makes sense. Like, he's Rick Steiner's son. Yeah. He's Scott Steiner's nephew. Like, yeah, these are two of the most iconic wrestlers of the 90s. So, like, I would love to see a priest Bron Breaker... But do I, I don't know that, that it's going to push that early. I don't know that it's going to happen yet, but I think it's going to happen faster for him than it has for other NXT call ups. So that's look, that's that's interesting. Um, I I can't wait to see what comes next. But the last thing that I want to touch on is is the question of predictability. Now a lot of people have said, "Oh, but it was so predictable." I want to say this as we're about to wrap up. I want to say, just because it's predictable, doesn't mean it wasn't right. Of course, I think if Cody lost that second night. Me with a whole lot of other fans would have just been. I don't think there would have been a Philadelphia left. Yeah. I I think there would have been riots in the streets. They made the right decisions. I think every single match, the right person won. Yep. And I think that's, that's the mark of a great event where people can walk away and go, even the worst match wasn't a terrible match and the right person won. Correct. And Cody with the star power that he has now, how we're talking about who's going to challenge for this, who's going to challenge for that. The star power that he draws and has, you could put him against anyone. Yep. And it would be a good good match. Agreed. Agreed. Mate, thank you so much for joining me today. No this worries. has been the post credit snack. I've been Loosh. That's not been Lockie. That's Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> how are you guys? <laughs> Lockie's having another sick day. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. Say hi to your mum for me.